Greetings everyone, welcome to the most beginner friendly and yet the most advanced and up to date stable diffusion dreamboat model training tutorial. In this guide video, I am going to use the latest automatic 11.11 web UI and the Dreamboot extension. The interface and the features of the Dreamboot plugin have been significantly changed, so all other tutorials are now obsolete. I have been experimenting for over 7 days to find the best settings and the training parameters. Moreover, I tried to learn what each option does and I have explained everything in this video. Before starting, let me provide some quick info. Stable Diffusion is a text-to-image generative public AI model and the Automatic 11.11 Web UI is a tool developed by the open source community to use Stable Diffusion easily. Dreamboot is an AI algorithm that allows you to teach new subjects or even styles to existing Stable Diffusion models very successfully such as teaching the face of a person. In this tutorial, I am going to use freshly installed Automatic 11.11 Web UI to teach my face by using Stable Diffusion 1.5 official version. I will also show how you can do the same training on Stable Diffusion version 2.1 as well. Moreover, I will show you how you can inject your trained subject, in this case my face, into any custom model and obtain amazing results. I will demonstrate an example by using the very popular and very high quality custom model Protogen X 3.4. With this injection methodology, you can use any namely released awesome model and obtain even better results. You won't even need to retrain your subject for this to work. This method provides such high quality images that you cannot even obtain them on paid services like Lensa or Midjourney. The Automatic 11.11 Web UI is getting constantly updated, so let me show you the version I am using from official repository. This is the official repository of the Stable Diffusion Web UI. It has been recently taken down, but it is now back again. So if you can't find this URL, just check out the video and I will update the description of the video and the comment of the video. So you will be find the latest link of the Automatic 11.11. So the commit we are using is uh, published nine hours ago, January 7, uh, 2023. If you don't know how to install Automatic 11.11 Web UI, I have a great tutorial for that. So this is the homepage of our YouTube channel. Go to playlist and in here you will see Stable Diffusion Dreamboot playlist. And in this playlist, easiest ways to install and run Stable Diffusion Web UI on PC. I will put the link of this video to the description and also you can watch how to use Stable Diffusion version 2.1 and different models in the web UI. This is also very important. I will also put the link of this video to the description as well. One more thing, uh, this is commonly asked. Uh, if you encounter any problem, go to about page of our channel and in here you will see our Discord channel link. As you can see, I am currently hovering that. You can join our Discord channel and ask me any questions that you encounter. So this is our beginning screen of the stable diffusion. And first, let's start with installing our extension Dreamboot. To do that, go to Extensions tab, click Available, Load From, and in here you will see Dreamboot extension. When you type Dreamboot, it is uh, listed in here. I am just clicking Install, and it is getting installed. You should see a message here. Okay, it has been installed. We have one error, but it is not a problem. It still works. So you see, we have a message on CMD window and also installed into the C Web UI tutorial extensions SD Dreamboot extension. Now we have to restart CMD window because we are the first time installing and it is a necessity, otherwise it won't work. Let's close. Let's restart. Okay, restart has been completed. Let's just refresh. And then go back to extensions and check for updates every time you start. Okay, it has been just got updated, so I'm just clicking apply and restart UI. Okay, it is done. After the first time installation, uh, you don't need to uh, restart CMD window once again. So you see this is how frequently these stuff are getting updated. Literally, it has been updated just now, as you can see. Uh, so you should always check the latest version. Now we can start our tutorial. We are Now we see the Dreamboot top in the interface. We click there. This is the interface where we are going to generate our model and train our face or new subject. First of all, we need to uh, generate our model you can simply enter any name here it doesn't matter so i will enter as web ui and the identifier prompt of my model which will be 
OHWX. I will explain why it will be OHWX. Then we need to check source point. You can also import from Hugging Face, but I don't suggest that it is not necessary. I am checking version 1.5 Prunut CKPT. So version 1.5 Prunut CKPT available in the official repository of Stable Diffusion 1.5. You can not just download it from here. Why we are using Prunut CKPT, not the Prunut Emma only CKPT? Because this is better for training new subjects. When you click here, you can just download it with clicking here. And uh, after you put that into the, your model folder, it will be also available here, as you can see. Okay. Then just click the create model button. Okay, you see we have a message checkpoint successfully extracted to uh, this folder. Where it is, let me show you. It is inside. Uh, web UI tutorial and let's go to the, our models and inside dream boot inside web UI OHWX and in here working and these are the actually weights uh, of the uh, model that we have just composed let's continue now this model is selected here this is where uh, the selection we make after we make this selection we will train the selected model yes okay then let's go to the settings tab in here first click performance wizard it will set the parameters according to the vram of your gpu uh, if you have lesser than 12 gigabyte of gpu it is really hard to use dream but unfortunately you can use lora but uh, it is a topic of another video actually it is almost same as this video but there is there are some just few tricks and i already have a video for lora so after watching this video if you watch that video the lora video you can easily apply lora to your uh, training uh, it is in here you see how to do stable diffusion lora training by using i will also put the link of this video to the description as well so training steps per image epochs first of all let me explain what is epoch um, we will have a training data set the pictures of the subject that we are going to teach in this case i am going to teach uh, myself I will use 12 images of myself therefore one epoch means that 12 steps okay so each step is a training step and each epoch is training all of the training images one time so one epoch means 12 steps in my case because I have 12 training images and how many epochs we want for teaching faces it is usually uh, suggested 150 so when you go to the concepts just click training visit person it will set the uh, most appropriate uh, values for person so you see now it is set to 150 however you can set this as much as you want and you can use the certain uh, checkpoints i will explain that so i'm just going to make it 300 and uh, how much time we want to wait each between each epoch zero this is also zero okay this is important how frequently we want to save uh, our training you know if your computer crashes if you cancel your training if whatever happens uh, it will you will be able to continue from your latest uh, saved model therefore this is important also if you do over training and you want to use previous training checkpoint you also need to have a save so i'm going to set this as 10 be careful that when you are doing dream boot training it is usually taking about four to five gigabytes for per saving so if you don't have much hard drive space uh, you need to set this a higher number perhaps this is saving preview images each epoch for example or for whatever the number of epochs you want this doesn't take space but this will uh, slow you down so i'm just going to leave this as five batch size now this is very important if you increase batch size it will speed up your training significantly however this will also increase your gpu memory usage significantly as well uh, if you increase these numbers you need to increase both of them equally to obtain the best results so now for example it will be almost four times faster also make sure that your training images count is divisible to this number so two multiplied by two makes four and you must have a training number of images uh, the uh, divisible to four so it can be four images eight images 12 images 
12 image, uh, 16 images, 20 images, but it should have been 17 images. Okay, this is the formula. You, if you, if let's say you have 16 gigabyte of uh, GPU RAM, then you can make this three by three, and then you should have nine or 18 or 27 or 36 images. That is the formula. I'm just going to leave this one by one for now. Also, by another, another thing is, if you make this two and two like this, it will be four times. Then you need to also increase learning rate by four times like this and this. Uh, otherwise, it will be very slow. It is also requiring to speed up the learning rate as well, as much as the, you increase them. Since I will use one by one, I'm just going to leave the default learning rate. Okay, set gradients to none when zeroing. If you uh, select this, it will increase the uh, GPU RAM usage. How can you know that? Uh, the Dreamboot uh, has a wiki pages and in here they have uh, RAM usage settings. Let me show you. Okay, in here settings now to use more VRAM. High batch size as I just explained. Setting gradients to none when zeroing which is uh, these settings in here. So when you check this it will use more uh, VRAM and then use MM. Okay, now let's continue and I will explain gradient checkpoint. This is technique to reduce memory usage by clearing activations. Uh, so uh, it is good to check it out. Uh, and then we are not just passing here. These are just kind of more advanced things to uh, play with it. Uh, after you get used to how to use the remote, you can just uh, change them. But in the learning stage, just leave them as they are. If you set this too high, it will get too fast uh, trained. However, uh, it will also overtrain easily. If you get them too low, uh, then you may never get it trained. Uh, so this is kind of experimental thing that you need to do a lot of experimentation image processing and resolution This is important when you use a model uh, Version based on the version 1.x Then they are uh, 512 pixels if you use version 2.1 then there is also 768 pixels version so you need to set this according to the version of your base model okay the base model the source checkpoint we check it here uh, since we are using version 1.5 official version it is 512 pixel uh, don't apply horizontal flip this is not good for faces center crop if your images are not cropped you should check this out i will explain uh, how to set your images since my images are center cropped i'm not checking this send it a sample prompt okay this is important we are going to use this prompt to see uh, the overall training uh, of the model but how in in terms of overtraining or not during the training training i will explain it. so i am going to enter here photo of ohwx man by tomer hanuka i will explain why did i enter this prompt and by tomer hanuka you will understand it miscellaneous pre-trained via or name or pet these are advanced things and you don't need uh, currently okay okay advanced top this is important if you check box the use emma then it will improve your training quality however it also increases the ram usage significantly use 8 bit adam this will reduce uh, the ram usage bf16 this is also this will also reduce uh, ram usage x formers this will um, significantly increase your training speed cage latents this will also reduce the uh, vram usage uh, all of these are actually written in this page uh, the uh, out of memory top of the wiki i will put this into the description uh, so you see these are all uh, decreasing the ram usage actually it says that cache latent increases but as far as i know this is not increasing but you can test that uh, so the uh, step ratio of text encoder training this will improve your training quality however it will also increase the ram usage of the graphic card so if you encounter uh, out of memory error you should set this zero but uh, the optimal value for faces is 0 0.7 for styles 0 0.2 and the other things you don't need to play with them they are more advanced stuff okay now the concepts this is the very important part you can set um, 
file words, prompts, and directories. So first of all, we have to set our training data set, training data set directory. Where are my uh, training data set? It is inside my pictures folder and it is in here, base DB. So all of these images are now 512 by 512 pixels. And uh, let me show their original version. So their original version is uh, here. How did I set them like this? I have used paint.net uh, to crop them as I want. For example, let me show you paint.net is a free tool, by the way. You can install it from the uh, Google. Just click like this. And then I am just cropping them with a square. So I click rectangle select, then click here, then in here, fix it right here like this. Then you can pick the, any part of the image you want. Just for example here, then you can control C, control N, and it will paste into new place. You can save it. Or in here, you can just resize this to very low resolution like this with control R. It will open resize. Type like this, then control V and expand. You see now it is cropped. Alternatively, you can use birme.net. Birme.net is a famous site to crop uh, images. It is commonly used in the community. Uh, you can just, for example, upload any image there and crop them. Um, for example, let's upload this image. These are currently squared, but if they are not squared, it will also automatically let you square them. Let me show. Okay, you see both of these images are not uh, cropped, so you are able to crop them with your mouse like this. Set the position, then uh, set the resolution from here, 512, 512. If you use ST version 2.1, then they will be 768 pixels. Okay, you can also use Autodeck image focal point. Do not resize, and you can click the. If you check, do not resize. It won't. They won't be resized to this resolution. Then save as zip, and all of them will be saved as zip. Then you can extract them uh, with the software you have. If you don't have any software like WinRAR, uh, Windows still able to extract them. All right. If you can't make them, just join Discord, and I will help you hopefully. So data set directory. When you read your images, then we will enter the path of it. So this is my, uh, let me enter the folder directory. I click here and you see, I am able to select the path. I do control C to copy it, paste it here. So this is the directory where my training images are located. Classification directory. Now what is classification? Classification are generic images that we will use to not over train our uh, model and also keep the inner uh, sanity of the model so that the entire model does not become looking like us okay so for this i will just generate a new folder as i have copy pasted the path i will uh, set it as a web ui tutorial you can also enter an existing another directory it is fine instance token now file words are used to set the di different description for each training images this is very very advanced and hard to do so i will explain this in the uh, later parts of the tutorial video for now i will just skip them you can also skip to that part uh, in the video because I will put the sections of the video into the description. Now prompts. This is very important. Uh, the instance prompt is used to define uh, the keyword that will activate our new uh, subject that we taught to the model. So in here you have to pick a unique word but it has to be very uh, specific and rare. Whatever you enter uh, to the model they will get turn it into tokens, uh, they will split into tokens. So there is a Reddit thread that explains the rare tokens. I will put link of this uh, page to the description. And in here, the rarity of the tokens are uh, listed. So for example, you have entered, uh, let's say mil. Uh, it is a single token, but mil probably exists uh, in the real life a lot. Therefore, you have to go to the bottom and try to find rare tokens that uh, you can't make sense of. For example, uh, they also these tokens shouldn't be uh, used in other languages as well. Um, for example, from here, OHWX is a very famous token because 
This is uh, a token that almost does not exist in anywhere. Uh, when I type OHWX to the uh, Google, you see all unrelated things. They look like spam. So this is a good token. And for example, you can also try other tokens here that looks like to you weird. Maybe uh, this one. Yes, this. Okay, I'm not sure if this is a real name or not. So you can verify it, but OHWX works very well and the token you pick is extremely important because your training will begin from that token and you can inject a new token that does not exist in the uh, database so everything you enter will become a token that it knows uh, they will get splint into even if you uh, generate a new keyword such as se courses the model will not see this as an se courses how will it see it first it will look to sk uh, sek so the sek does exist okay then it will look sek sec sec so yes sec also uh, exists and then it will look seco okay there is no seco so it will get split into sec and then uh, it will be like uh, it will check the other characters the remaining characters so they will all get split into yes r so se courses uh, will probably become sec or sys or something like that you see you are understanding i am hoping that uh, so the keyword you enter will get split into tokens no matter what you enter therefore we are picking uh, a single token that is very rare from this list and i have done many tests so ohwx working very well and then we need to enter the class of the subject we are going to teach what am i going to teach i am going to teach the face of me so it's the face of man therefore i am just entering man so this is really important uh, it will use the underlying knowledge of man in the model to learn my face class prompt now uh, as i said this will be used to uh, keep sanity of our model and prevent overtraining when you also hover it, uh, it says read me for more info. I wonder if they added into the uh, wiki yet, in the basics perhaps. Okay, in the uh, wiki, in the basics, uh, they have a, a small explanation. A class-specific priori pres preservation loss is also introduced to prevent overfitting and encourage the generation of diverse instances of the same class they have made an example like this so in class prompt i am going to enter photo of man okay uh, you see these two are same and the sample prompt this will be used to generate preview images during the training so we will be able to see how the training is going on and if it is becoming too overtrained or not uh, so in here i am going to enter photo of ohwx man okay i'm not entering any negative prompts and i'm not using any sample prompt template uh, so these are more uh, let's say advanced things that you can also play with them after you learn it the basics and in here class images per instance in the community it is usually said that have minimal uh, 300 images total uh, in the official paper of the dream boot which is here i will also put the link of this uh, paper to the description they have used 200 classification images uh, i have made some tests but uh, i can't say for sure how much minimum is necessary so i am just going to follow the community and to reach the 300 images i need to enter uh, let's easily calculate 300 divided by the number of uh, training images i have 12 so 25 you can also calculate like this so classification cvg scale this is same as txt images uh, cfg scale uh, how many how much cfg scale you want to use for generating classification images by the way you can also use text to image tab to generate your classification images put them into the folder that we set here then the uh extension will not generate generate any new images is it, it is up to you you can use the both ways but if you uh, if you use this way it will also generate a, te a text description file same as the uh, image name 
name and it will put the uh, description you have typed here inside that i will show in a moment classification steps so this is the number of steps equal to the in here sampling steps okay and number of samples to generate so this is the number of samples that we want to be generated during the training uh, to see how the training is going on you can set this to one two three four whatever you want sample seat minus one it means that the every image generated for samples will be different random with a random seed and the sample uh, cfg scale uh, 7.5 you, you, do, you don't need to change this we, these are just same as the text to image you will make sense of it after you after you get used to text to image okay and now let's return back here uh, how many images we want to generate for classification at the same time in parallel so i have 12 gigabyte uh, vram memory therefore i am able to generate 10 images as a batches so it will take lesser time to generate classification images by the way you only need to generate classification images one time for each class prompt so if you don't change photo of man if you if you don't change your uh, subject class then you know you don't need to generate them once again so for uh, showing you uh, i will just set this as five then you will understand it will generate images five and five uh, as batches okay and uh, one more thing you can uh, teach up to three concept at a time to the model so the first concept is is let's say it's me and in here i can also teach my wife picture for example it it can be like wife db so another folder and its uh, classification data set can be exactly same as the other one or no it wouldn't be because it would be related to woman since it will be a woman not man therefore let's say woman images and in here uh, you need to use another keyword for that so it is important to find a rare keyword uh, from uh, this list uh, i don't know which ones are very rare but SKE is uh, commonly used with another uh, prompt so it can be like uh, SKE uh, woman and in here it will be photo of woman and sample will be photo of uh, SKE woman okay and the rest is same and you can also add another concept here but the only thing that matters is the uh, class of the another subject if it, it if it is a cat or a dog or a tree whatever you are teaching the class and the instance prompt so that you can differently call them and you can use uh, both of them in a single picture for example you can generate pictures of your wife and yourself in the same picture or your dog and yourself in the same picture but for this tutorial i am not going to teach multiple uh, concepts so it is up to you to teach or not i will just teach on a single concept all right now we are moving to saving uh, tab in here you can enter a custom model name for saving checkpoints and lora models uh, you can check out the half model they say that it, it doesn't uh, decrease the quality uh, but the checkpoints are smaller i didn't test it uh, so i can't uh, say if it is 100 percent correct or not so to keep the quality uh, in max i won't check it save checkpoints to sub directory you should make this uh, you should check this uh, checkbox so that uh, the savings will be under web ui or hwx they won't get uh, in the same directory now this is important Send, generate a cqpt file uh, when saving during training if you don't check this then let's say you won't be able to test load back and test the uh, model at the 20 epoch or 40 epoch or 60 epoch so you should check this out you can also continue from that point using that as a base model and you can also load that model and um, you can do uh, test inference on that so this is important but this will increase your uh, hard drive usage be careful with that 
Generate a security file when training complete. Yes. Generate a security file when training is cancelled. I'm not checking this because when I cancel, I don't want it to generate a security. Uh, after cancelling, you can just load the model and click security and it will generate a security file from the last saved wait. Now wait, you see, there is also option to save separate diffuser snapshots when saving during training. Uh, this option uh, will generate wait files like you see here. So for demonstration purposes, I will also select this. From later point, you can just uh, make them as a new model uh, folder and then you can continue your training from there. Alternatively, I believe you can uh, generate a new model from your saved uh, CKPT file as a new source checkpoint and you can continue from that uh, saved uh, checkpoint CKPT file. I think both should be same. Okay. After you did settings, just click save settings. When you click train, I think it is automatically also saving. Now uh, I will generate the class images before starting training. Uh, this will use the settings that I did set uh, in these options and let's see what kind of class images we are going to get. Okay, so you see it is generating 300 class images for training. Why? Because currently I have no images in here, but as you can see, it is not working right now. Uh, so there is a mistake, obviously. To solve this mistake, I will just restart the application. Okay, restart is completed. Let's refresh. Go back to our extensions tab. Check for updates. If there is any update. Yes, there is a new update. Uh, during the uh, video, uh, the updates are coming. So let's just refresh. Okay, refresh it. Let's go back to extensions. Check for updates. Okay, we are at the uh, last. Then let's go to Dream Boot. Select our model and load settings. Go to the generate. Before generating, I will uh, delete these incorrect images first. Uh, let me do that. Go to the pictures and in here, uh, go to the web UI tutorial. Control A, Shift, delete. Yes, all deleted. And just click generate class images. Okay, let's see if any error again. Okay, okay, I think error continues. So instead of this method, uh, I will use text to image tab to generate images. The only difference between this and using text to image is, let me show you. Meanwhile, just let's uh, restart the application. Uh, when you use generate images like this, it will also generate a text file, same name as the uh, image name. And in, inside it, it will write photo of man as a description. So this is useful when you do uh, file wars training or uh, when you do LoRa training. Uh, but for now, uh, it is not necessary for us. Uh, I, I, I just reported this bug also to the developer. So I believe it will get fixed uh, really quickly. Okay, so we are going to generate our class uh, images from here. Uh, classification images, photo of man. I'm just typing that. Setting the sampling steps counts 40. Setting CFG is 7.5. Uh, so this batch size means that uh, processing multiple images at the same uh, epoch. Uh, it will use more GPU RAM, but it will make it faster. And how many I need? I need 300. Therefore... I am going to set this as 38 like this and then just click generate. So now it will generate images, but make sure that the selected model here, you see, is same as the model that you use it to generate your model. So in here, when you select your model for training, it shows the base model source checkpoint. You see stable diffusion 1.5 prunet. And currently I am generating same images from this model. Uh, so the uh, generated images will be saved in text to image folder. Let's open it by clicking here. Okay, when I have clicked it, uh, open folder in here, it didn't open because it says in the CMD window, uh, text to image images does not exist. 
after you create an image it will be generated because as i said this is a fresh installation uh, to demonstrate you therefore all of my settings here are also default i didn't change any of them and there is one another thing that i want to mention in the dream boot mode selection uh, you will see in the st 1.x versions uh, they has they have emma or not so uh, if they have emma it will increase your uh, further training fine tuning the model uh, so you should pick emma version having models uh, it only exists in the 1.x versions i think in the st 2.0 uh, in the 2.1 there is no model released uh, with has emma feature okay the first batch has been completed let's open the folder now the folder is opened so these are photo of man you see there will be very weird images bad quality images but it they don't uh, matter much they are not very important uh, as long as they are generated by our checkpoint model okay after all of the images uh, have been generated just select them all with ctrl c then go back to your uh, folder where you want to get them saved web ui tutorial i am just going to copy paste them uh, in the folder okay let's return back to our dream boot and uh, load settings so now we have the sufficient amount of uh, classification images now we are ready to click start training okay when we start training uh, it will first start by caching caching uh, them out we will see that so you see it says that it has found uh, 300 reg regularization images therefore it is not going to generate any more images uh, currently it is caching them okay after the caching has been completed you will see the uh, training has been started uh, it is uh, progressing step by step uh, you see uh, 13 14 if you get uh, out of memory error then you need to try further decreasing memory usage uh, all of the low memory settings and uh, high memory settings are stated in the wiki i will put this into the description also you you are seeing right now high batch size set gradients these will increase your memory usage and these will uh, decrease your memory usage there is not much uh, else things that you can do and one another thing is that the developers are constantly trying to optimize and improve the uh, extension to reduce memory usage uh, so therefore when you watch this uh, video or maybe one month later uh, you your card could perhaps do use uh, dream Boot training uh, so that's another possibility and after how many steps we are going to see our first sample images we can calculate it easily uh, in the settings tab we did set as 10 epoch and how many training images we have we have 12 you see in here therefore after 120 steps we are going to see our first uh, sample uh, training sample images actually on after 120 steps it will save the checkpoint after uh, 60 steps because we did set five epochs we are going to see the first sample image and uh, 60 steps has been completed so it is generating preview images at the step 60 okay the first samples have been generated let's open the samples folder so where they were saved they were saved under our uh, model let me show okay i have so many same tabs okay inside our installation folder go to the models and in here go to the dream boot and in here you see the same name as our training model name enter there in here you will see samples when you click here you will see the samples so the first sample is generated with this sample uh, prompt with wx man so this is our class and this is the unique instance prompt we have set okay so there is another image you see uh, this is uh, generated with photo of OHWX man by Tomar Hanuka why did I set this and where did I set this I did set this in here if you remember 
the uh, second prompt you see in here uh, with name it as one is the sanity sample prompt uh, the f uh, the f the number here is the step count that it has been generated and this is the the other thing is the prompt user to generate it uh, after we progress in the training you will understand why we are using this uh, as much as this image looks like us with a different style it means that our model is learning good and when it becomes exactly like us not styled like this that would mean that our model is overtrained and now we can't apply styles our aim is learning our uh, teaching our shape but not overtraining it not um, distributing uh, disturb disturbing the underlying context the knowledge of it not overriding it completely uh, so after we progress in the training we will understand better okay now expl let me explain to you the how to prepare your training dataset images what is important with uh, the selection of the images what we want to teach is the uh, the subject that we want to teach the most important part i want to teach my face therefore other than my face everything must be different or let's say should be different in each of the images so other than face what can be different my clothes and the background can be different so uh, if you are teaching your face other than your face all of the backgrounds and the clothes should be different as much as possible as you can see in my pictures i have made sure that all of the backgrounds and the clothes are different or or the clothes are not visible uh, so if you make your clothes different and your backgrounds are different then the model will learn your face not your clothes or not the backgrounds that is what we want we want to teach our face not the other things in the pictures if you use same clothes then the model uh, will not say that this is the face and uh, the model will learn both of them at the same time and it will reduce your stylizing your uh, face therefore the key point of preparing training images is having different things other than the subject so the, if the subject is face the other things must be different okay um, also you should have different angles of photos and different uh, distances of photos it will make the model uh, learn different angles and different distances to generate different kinds of uh, different styles uh, more variety of images so uh, if you make your images uh, i can't say my data set is the best available data set you can expand your data set with, with more variety of images more variety of poses more variety of angles more variety of uh, lightning lightning also matters it would be better uh, however this is a small data set and uh, i think it is working pretty decently but if you expand this data set your training data set with more variety then it is better it will learn your face or subject in a more generalized manner and with that way we will be able to uh, produce different kind of different artistic images more easily okay so you see currently it is compiling a checkpoint cqpt file and you can just load the cqpt file directly and to uh, inference on that checkpoint uh, it is compiling checkpoint at the step uh, 360 which is epoch 30 and so where are these uh, checkpoint files are located they are located on models inside inside our folder and you see the cqpt file and the yaml file uh, is here if you don't know what are yaml files just watch my uh, how to use uh, stable diffusion 2.1 and different models in the web ui uh, tutorial video i will put the link uh, as usual and um, let's check out our uh, so far samples so in this image this is like me but no other uh, sample prompts are like us uh, we just need to do more training and also in this screen you will see uh, 5.5 or 3.7 so this means that this is how many uh, iterations 
uh, per iteration is done in each second however these values are not very correctly displayed uh, so there is also loss and this lr is important this shows your learning rate so 2e minus 6 what does that mean that means that uh, it is a number when you type it to the google 2e minus 6 and go to the first result for example it will show you it is equal to this number okay so this is the number actually we did set in our settings in our learning rate you see so this is equivalent of this scientific e notation number uh, if you set uh, changing numbers uh, from here you see there are ch uh, changing numbers like polynomial constant or other things and uh, learning rates then uh, you will see different numbers uh, in here and it also shows the gpu usage however this is also not very accurate it says that 9.5 gigabytes currently is being used okay okay it has been uh 72 82 epochs now i will show you how you can continue training uh, if an error occurs so to illustrate that i will just crash the application with closing here uh, when you close from here it won't save any checkpoint or anything you see error uh, connection error then just restart the application and after the restart is done just refresh your interface go to the reboot tab uh, select the model uh, click load settings it actually it will be automatically loaded and John, then just click train it will continue from the last checkpoint which is 80 epochs let's wait okay you see it has uh, it is continuing from wherever it is left uh, as you can see here Also in the CMD window, it shows first resume epoch and first resume step, step as, you can, as you can see here. Okay, we are over 168 epochs and we are already doing a lot of overtraining. Uh, how do I know? Uh, as I said to you in the beginning, uh, I have entered a sanity, uh, sanity prompt. So the samples numbered with uh, dash one are the sanity prompts and let's look at the sanity prompts changes so the sanity prompts started like this then in here you see the sanity prompt is resembling me and also here resembling me okay uh, resembling me somehow and after certain point actually after 1368 steps the uh, sanity prompts become uh, just like me you see it is not anymore styled okay like this like this and this is almost as like me and uh, you see they are not anymore uh, styled like here I think it's completely gone and in here therefore now we are sure that uh, we are doing over training so I'm just going to stop training with cancel and I am going to use uh, different uh, checkpoints, test them out to see how they are performing. Now the hard part is coming, uh, the prompting, the proper, the correct prompting to obtain the good results. So the training has been cancelled. Uh, let's uh, look for the closest one. I am refreshing here and in here. Yes, this one looks like the closest one, 1308 then go to the text to image tab so how are we going to generate our own image we are going to use photo of these two keywords are also associated with us right now but not as strong as our prompt instance OHWX and man also man is very much associated okay uh, so when we type like this and hit the generate button it will generate our own image okay the image is ready you see it is like us and now we need to style it so let's add uh, in this nice style and let's see what kind of result we are going to get okay as you can see we didn't get much of um, styling so therefore I am going to show you an extension 
which is named as web ui prompt generator you can install it from available tab just click load and in here just search for prompt and you will see prompt generator and just click install and then just apply and restart the ui after that you will see prompt generator tab here so let's get some extra additional keywords from prompt generator and let's click generate okay there are a lot of results here but uh, this came to me uh, could work like so i copied it and pasted it in here and let's see the result we are going to get okay we got somewhat decent results but it is still not very much like us therefore we need to increase the uh, prompt strength so what is prompt strength prompt attention this is from the official wiki of the automatic 1111 so if you want to increase attention to a word by factor of 1.1 you can take the word inside one parenthesis if you want to increase the attention even more by factor of 1.2 uh, uh, 21 so you can just put like this alternatively you can use an easier way which will be let me show you let me also some zoom in just type like this okay so this will uh, increase the attention this will force model to uh, generate image that is more like us and uh, it will going to ignore the rest also in this uh, prompt there are so many things that would be unrelated to disney style so what would be uh, related to disney style for example cgi uh, uh, and let's also add some other keyboard okay here are results not very much like us and not very good quality we need to improve the prompt we're with adding uh, some uh, negative prompts as well okay here i have added some negative prompts and now you see we have a uh, much better artwork but still not very much uh, resembling uh, to me so i am going to try another prompt with also increasing uh, the uh, the emphasis of our unique keyword which is OHWX and the man uh, in every prompt you must have OHWX man uh, with some increased strength probably to get your own face and also adding photo of why because during the training we have used class prompt as photo of man therefore now these three keywords are also associated with us but the most association is coming from OHWX okay okay so I am going to try with uh, emphasis of 1.5 and a Neve uh, prompt like this let's see the results okay we got an image that is not very stylized therefore we need to increase CFG so what is CFG CFG is classifier free guidance scale how strongly the image should conform the prompt lower values produce more creative results we want uh, the uh, model to obey our uh, prompt because we are providing um, a very detailed prompt therefore we need to increase scale and try it so i will show you how you can try multiple uh, scale values go to the bottom on here and go to the xi plot so in the xy plot there are x and y values currently we only need x value in the x value i am going to select cfg scale and in here i am just typing 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and i want it to use same seat uh, for all of the input so that i can see the changes and i will generate four images uh, in each iteration in each step uh, my graphic card is able to uh, process four images if you don't have much vram you can do that and then you should increase this okay uh, if you check this keep minus one for seats then the each image in the each uh, uh, generation would be different however i want to see the difference of cfg effect uh, in a uh, legend uh, therefore i'm keeping it like this and then just click generate so currently in the cmd window actually it is generating 
four images at each epoch. Uh, so you see in the 20 step actually it is processing eight steps so four of them is being parallelly uh, processed since i did set batch size to four okay uh, cfg images uh, different cfg images have been ge generated i have modified the input uh, because the previous input was not very good actually it turns out that uh, but it is not important because when you are working with stable diffusion you have to make you have to generate a lot of images to find out the good ones that you uh, you would like uh, to obtain so let's uh, look at look at the uh, effect of the cfg so this is our uh, seed value if you use this seed value you will always generate similar uh, images in each gener generation uh, as long as you keep the same uh, value same uh, model so this is the CFG scale 7. At the CFG scale 7, there is not much resemblance. At the CFG scale 8, a little bit resemblance. Uh, look at how the images are changing. This is CFG scale 9. Uh, there is some resemblance in these two. Okay. And if in the CFG scale 10, now this is also some resemblance. And in here, okay, you see resemblance is increasing. And uh, in the CFG scale 14, actually, there is really good resemblance in this image and in this image, actually. And so it goes. And after 13 CFG scale, it becomes, uh, I think the quality starts to be uh, decreasing. So therefore, the CFG scale uh, makes difference. Now, let's say you want to test out different artists uh, styles with different uh, CFG scales. How can you do that? I am putting here a special keyword that I am going to use by replace KW. Okay, then the rest is anything you want. And in the bottom, so this time I am going to select uh, prompt SR. Okay, so the prompt SR works as separate a list of words with commas and the first word will be used as a keyword. Script will search for this word in the prompt and replace it with others. So this keyword will be replaced whatever I type here. So let's say W lob and then art germ and then whatever other artists uh, that you want to test. Okay, I have added two more artists. So we have four artists. Let's also uh, test four CFG values. 10, 11, 12 and 13 perhaps. Let's start from 11. Okay okay and let's uh, keep seeds for minus one but that time we we couldn't test the cfg or the style therefore let's keep the same seed okay and you see there are restore phases tiling and high res fix so you could also pick them to improve your output but that would take extra time and you can do them in the extra stop which i will show and the batch count is one and batch size is four let's see what kind of results we are going to get by the way these other keywords will also heavily affect the artist style uh, therefore if you therefore if you want to only check out the artist style then you should reduce the number of extra keywords here and let's see what we are going to get Okay, I did get runtime error. Why? Because I have forgotten to put this keyword in here. The first keyword has to be that. Now I need to run again. Okay, now the generation started. You should always uh, check out the CMD window and what is happening here. If you get an error, then you should fix it, obviously. Okay, this is the kind of tile that we are going to get. Actually, it is pretty useful. So you see in the top CFG scale and in the uh, left, we got the art style. By the way, uh, it also produces results with replace uh, KW and not much like uh, representing this style or me. Therefore, perhaps we can uh, remove many of the uh, keywords that would uh, take away uh, the style uh, like let me do okay this time we have more kind of styling 
as you can see here uh, this is the default this is uh, w lob this is art Garm. Uh, this is robert s duncanson and this is carol buck especially carol buck style is pretty different and significant as you can see so the key point is is uh, with stable diffusion that you have to generate a lot of images and some of them will be very very good and maybe majority of them will not be good and useful this is the nature of the um, uh, ai based uh, art generation especially if you are trying to generate uh, art based on your uh, subject a new subject and also when we were doing training in here you can use more classification images that can help uh, i said that the uh, community is using 300 total but that is not um, a hard limit you can just use uh, 200 images for per training image and that may help you to uh, improve your style actually it is also the number used in the official paper as i said so it is up to you you have to do experimenting uh, the numbers and the uh, quality you get also totally will depend on your training data set if you get a much variety having a training data set uh, uh, as i have explained it then you your model can learn much better i will show you one another thing here there is a prompt matrix uh, that will generate combination of the images okay so when you type your query like this and select it prompt matrix this query will become face photo of ohwx man 1.3 like this and then they will get uh, combine it by like this so this will be generate all of the combinations of the uh, written text separated with the uh, let me tell you once again uh, vertical pipe character uh, it will generate all of these keywords combination like this okay i will show one another thing let's say you are going to sleep and you want your computer to generate many different style of uh, images for you during your sleep uh, for that i will show you an easy way to do it uh, so our first uh, our first uh, prompt is face photo of ohwx and let's say 1.4 then let's add some uh, certain keywords to get some certain kind of prompt okay i have typed it like this and generated 20 input like this then it has generated me a lot of results i am going to copy all of this into a notepad file paste it so you see they are actually copied as one line each one then i will generate several more okay i keep copy pasting the newly generated input to there okay now i have 60 lines of uh, inputs like this i am going to save it as let's go to the pictures and uh, nightly prompts okay then go back to text to image tab and in here select prompts from file or text box you can paste all of them here or you can uh, upload them from here so i will upload them uh, from the text box uh, from the text file and they are all uploaded i'm going to say uh, use random seed for all lines because i want to get as many as possibly different results and then i want to generate how many images you want to generate for each one i want to generate let's say eight images in parallel and uh, currently they will use the cfg value i i am going to set here 14 so with 60 and 8 images uh, batch size we are going to get uh, 480 images let's say you want to generate 4000 or uh, whatever you want uh, so if i set this 20 we, we are going to get exactly 20 times multiplied by 8 and multiplied by the number of lines we have uh, 9600 images during the night 
with a lot of different uh, inputs variation and among them you can pick the whatever you want and use it as you want uh, this is one of the options that you can uh, okay after i click it uh, it started generating images uh, for example generated this one and if you wonder what is this image you go to the png info and then you can just uh, go to uh, get the image drag and drop it in here and it will show you all of the parameters it has so this is the prompt input and this is the negative prompt input it has and the number of steps used uh, the sampler used the cfg scale used the seed so with this seed you can repeat this image generate it uh, you can use this seed and change the cfg value and generate other variations of this and the size and the model hash the model hash of course will change since uh, we are using our custom trained model the batch size and the batch uh, position so this is also important to exactly get this you need to generate again against a batch size as eight and the sixth position will be this one if you use this seat and this cfg value and this sampler we are getting some decent photos and i will leave it to run <laughs> during my sleep and tomorrow i will show you uh, of course in a moment for you uh, we are going to see what kind of good images we got okay here you see some of the images i have generated during my sleep uh, they are pretty good quality but they are very similar why because it appears that the inputs i have used to generate them were not much different um, however some of them are really high quality for example this image you see it has almost perfect eyes perfect shape uh, it's a really good quality image uh, so your training data set and the keywords the prompts you use will 100 percent affect the outcome that you are going to get and you really need to stylize or prompt according to what you want to get now let me show you a few of the prompts used for generating these images to doing that i am going png info okay and then i will drag and drop for example let's first see a 3d like image okay and you see this used blender uh, zbrush autodesk maya unreal engine color it because if you want to generate a 3d like image then you need to use uh, these kind of keywords then you can send this to for example let's go to the extras tab in extras tab i can uh, upscale this image uh, to get it a bigger size uh, after my uh, testing i have found that rs uh, rgan 4x plus works best there is also anime version uh, also as lsdr uh, is working very good but this requires a lot of uh, gpu memory so when i click generate uh, when the first time you generate it it is going to uh, download the model uh, that is necessary for the real s grand x4 plus you can see here and now we will see the up, up, upscaled image so this is the upscaled image the upscale and the original will not be exactly same but let's compare them okay let's make them um, not zoom it in okay so you see both of these are uh, really similar uh, a little bit of uh, loss of quality let's also uh, try with the anime version okay now we got the anime version so let's say you want to make your images uh, like anime then you can use that this is extremely useful you can also upscale entire folder uh, for example i will just uh, control a select all then i will drag and drop them here all of them is now here now i can upscale all of them at once let me show during the operation you will see uh, they are getting tiled like this to generate uh, bigger size images the results of upscaling the extras tab actually will be inside another folder when i click it you will see uh, they are getting here and all of these images are now upscaled uh, for example let's open this this is a pixar style uh, image actually okay this is another pixar style image uh, 
um, so for example this is also another Pixar style image as you can see uh, I have trained this on the Google Colab and now I will show you how you can upload your model to the Google Colab and uh, pro generate images there uh, with faster than probably your GPU because the Google Colab GPU is really strong able to uh, process a lot of uh, images at once uh, in a parallel way okay you see all of these are getting upscaled okay um, let's see some of them like this as you can see okay okay now I will show one another cool thing uh, usually you may not get very good looking eyes uh, or some errors in the face and there is a very good way uh, to uh, improve the eyes or the overall structure of the face it uses another AI model and let's try this image improving usually the uh, my images for really good eyes okay uh, to test it i am just going to not upscale but i am going to use gpp gan so this gpp gan uh, is a model to improve the eyes let's test it uh, when the first time you use it it will download the necessary model okay now let's compare the result this is the original image and this is the fixed image now let's also apply an upscale okay okay after applying upscale and uh, applying a gpp again you see it is now looking much better in terms of quality correctness uh, this will seriously improve the eyes uh, let's open them uh, like this okay let's zoom in so you see the difference is huge much better quality styling uh, you can apply this to your uh, generated images as a batch as well just go to batch process and select the options from here and it will do everything you can also try these other options i i didn't find them very useful actually and there is also not a description to them okay now i will show you how you can continue training from any checkpoint that you did set just go to the search checkpoint and you will see your saved checkpoints here by the way uh, to get them saved in the saving you need to uh, check this generator security file when uh, saving during checkpoint and then uh, if you generate a new model from that checkpoint you will basically continue training from that certain checkpoint now i will show you how you can use these uh, ckpt files directly in a google collab uh, if you have watched my previous video about transform yourself into a stunning ai avatar this tutorial is how to do uh, training on a google collab and uh, everything is explained there uh, to use your ckpt file in a google collab it is so so easy first we are going to generate a new model from the our wanted checkpoint that let's say i want to use step 1380 as a checkpoint then i am giving it a name as a call up uh, image okay and nothing else just click create model okay it has generated a generated a new model for me call up image and inside working directory you just need to upload this into uh google google drive and then uh, just give its path so for i will say that uh, my image okay let's say uh, let's also add our keyword to that and let's move them inside here and then go to your drive folder like this where you are running your uh dream boot uh, or the stable diffusion then drag and drop this uh, directory to here it will upload all of the files as you can see in here once the upload is completed all we need to do is changing model path in the inference tab of the uh, google collab notebook uh, this is uh, linked in the uh, description of the tutorial so you need to change it like this content drive my drive and in here my drive image or hwx which is the 
uh, folder name that I have given and I am uploading to the main folder of my Google Drive then uh, in the Google Colab you will be able to use your train it uh, CQPT file right away so what if if you want to uh, teach another face uh, just generate a new model like this and this time in the concepts folder uh, set the directory and the classification directory for your new subject uh, however be careful with something uh, currently, my model is trained with OHWX man as an instance prop and photo of man uh, as class prompt. So, if I am going to teach another uh, person, a male, then I have to pick another keyword, for example, SKA uh, or another rare keyword, and um, it will teach these men into the model as well. So, we will be able to use both of them. However, uh, probably you will get mixed results because man keyword were already teach it for my own image and when I introduce another man image uh, they will get mixed so uh, it could be a problem but you can try it test it and if you generate sufficient of images then I think you will you can obtain still good results however if you uh, inject some uh, another class like a uh, woman then it shouldn't be much problem and you should be able to teach multiple different subjects easily now i will explain more advanced stuff for example uh, the directories dataset directory okay to be able to use file words you need to have a training dataset name it like this okay so for each image you are also going to have a text file with the same name uh, the extension will be txt like this and uh, you need to write the description of that file properly there is a new ai model for uh, captioning images this is not implemented to automatic 1111 11 yet but i will it will be i will put the link of this into the description you can also locally run this uh, and if you don't know how to locally run uh, run this then uh, you need to watch our this video Ready? on our channel in this video i am explaining how to locally run hugging face uh, files okay uh, and uh, i will just use the online demo right now because it is not very much used so first image i will just drag and drop here oh, sorry about that okay like this and click submit it will generate the description uh, for this image you see uh, you should use the caption generated by git large this is the best one a man with dark hair and glasses is smiling okay so let's just uh, change this text text uh, text description like this however there is one key issue you have to have your class for this image inside this description so my class is man and therefore it is there okay let's go then this is another image that we want to caption so let's submit it okay and then another image description is here let's open the description a cat with long whiskers looking at the camera and this is the class of cat and it is inside here as well yes correct and the rest will be for dog as well now for class classification images you need to do the same when you generate classification you also need to have classification image and its description let's say this is my classification image and it is uh, it is generated with photo of man therefore i need to generate a same file description like this and inside here i need to type photo of man uh, when this tab uh, get fix it let me show you maybe it is already fixed i am not sure in here you see we have generate class images and uh, when you use that feature it will be able to let's try it actually okay and let's yeah it doesn't matter okay and when we type um, class prompt here photo of man i think it should it will generate with it let's try it okay it's not working it says maybe save 
Okay, it's still not working. When this become working, then you can easily generate it uh, or you need to generate the description like this. Photo of man and it will generate images like that or photo of cat or photo of dog. So this will be your classification directory with description like this and um, this will be your uh, classification directory with naming like this. With this way you can teach multiple subjects in the one run and you can also possibly improve your uh, training quality if you provide a better description uh, with defining more things by the way when defining um, you should specify your subject in the description what you want to teach if you want to teach face then you should describe the face in uh, mostly okay and one another thing okay once you prepared your folders now uh, here the way to do it first of all we are defining uh, the dataset directory as usual okay let's set it and let's also set the classification directory like this and in file words we need to use uh, defining prompt instance okay this will be uh, used to define it uh, it has to be a single word therefore i am entering ohwx and the class token uh, this will be also a single word by the way uh, it won't be uh, very precise actually if you use this way class token but yeah looks like uh, if you teach multiple different uh, classes then you may not get very good performance for example teaching a cat a face uh, a cat a dog and a man because they are conflicting uh, with the current setup so using three concept is better but let me also uh, explain it to you so this will be man and in prompts you are just going to type file words and class prompt you are just going to type file uh, words and leave blank to use instance prompt optionally use file words to base sample captions on instance images you can just also use file words to see uh, what is it, what it is generating uh, this is called mixed where in the basics of the wiki of dreamboot extension so you see there is dreamboot regular training that i have shown in this tutorial then there is fine tuning fine tuning is the standard approach for big datasets only the captions of the images are used file words class images are not used this results in a model that doesn't need instance token and reacts to any prompt so in this case you are overall training what does that mean that means that let's say uh, in your file words you have cars <coughs> you have you have cats you have dogs you have man you are training all of these <coughs> words and this is how the custom models you see are usually trained let me show an example so for example protogen x 3.4 is a custom model and it is working pretty good uh, how do they train it they probably train it with fine tuning so in fine tuning they have uh, precisely prepared the descriptions of each training image they didn't use any classification images and they have overly changed the underlying context data the knowledge of the model so when you use now man uh, it produces quality of man images depending on their new fine-tuned data set or car or castle or whatever that you are improving your um, model on and there is hybrid okay actually i said mix it but it will be hybrid hybrid for lack or of better term is achieved using instance token in combination to file words as instance prompt the trained data set will be linked to that instance token this minimizes the bleed but requires token in every prompt as you can see here so you have to use ohwx french bulldog or ohwx uh, whatever you have teach it also you see the class token is person so with hybrid model with file words if you, you if you don't do fine tuning but only teach a new subject the subject should be i think same class they can't be from different classes so you can teach multiple uh, person 
uh, in a single run maybe 10 person with just providing uh, correct uh, file words and their descriptions so for this person uh, you need to add let's say a man person a okay this will define person a for person b you need to add person b and for person c you need that person c but you are not going to add into this description uh, you are not going to add this uh, instance token okay you don't need to type instance token into the file words uh, into the description of the uh, training images or the into the description of the uh, classification images okay this is important okay now i will show how you can understand uh, out of memory error so it is easy i'm just going to load settings for our existing uh, data set you see i have an error so it looks like i had error in cmd i just need to restart okay i did restart and in the settings if i set uh, use emma so actually this improves our uh, result quality but it costs more ram and then i just click train and let's see how we are going to get out of memory error okay we got our error let me show you how to understand out of memory error you will see runtime CUDA out of memory if you are seeing this error all other messages are not important this means that with the current settings that you are trying to training your graphic card is not enough and you need to reduce the RAM usage now let me show you all of the settings to how to reduce the RAM usage okay so for minimal ram usage you need to pick lora with the lora there is just a little bit difference uh, it is only different when you try to uh, do inference and generate new images from uh, generated lora file and when you watch this video you will learn that okay lora will uh, significantly reduce ram usage other than that always make sure that your batch size and gradient accumulation steps are one and other than that in the advanced tab you need to pick use 8 bit adam and select bf16 and select x formers so for x formers to be able to you need to set your uh, starting arguments to x formers and uh, minus minus no half uh, this will uh, allow you to use that cage latents actually this is the this is still not clear you should try both this check it and uncheck it because some says that this increases some says that this decreases uh, so also step ratio of text encoder training this should be zero because this increases quality but also reduces uh, also increases the vram usage and other than this uh, there is not much else that you can do these are the lowest possible uh, also you need to uh, uncheck this checkbox and you need to check this checkbox so when you check this checkbox it will increase your vram usage but when you check this checkbox it will reduce your uh, vram usage actually actually the settings are written in the troubleshooting part of the dreamboot wiki extension in the oom tab and there is also overtraining and other things uh, actually our training is still in uh, working process and i have already shown you how to understand our training and one another cool thing that i am going to show you is pre-processing your images so uh, with pre-processing images you can easily generate uh, descriptions for your both training images and your uh, classification images of course they won't be very uh, accurate so let me show you i am picking my uh, best db 512 as source directory and the description directory will be same so in here you can even define their target resolution change them but i prefer manually changing them and captioning so for captioning i am just going to uh, select ignore so it will generate new captions and i am going to use deep proof for captioning you can also generate flip it copies uh, oversized images split it autofocal point crop so let's say you have tens of thousands of images then these options will be extremely useful for you however if you are only going to train your face then you should manually prepare your training data set to be best and then uh, i am going to uh, 
uh, generate captions for them i'm just going to click pre-process it shouldn't change uh, the width and height because they are already 512 pixels and it is downloading the uh, deep blue for captioning this is another model just as i have shown you in here uh, the deep blue is not as good as caption generated by git large but it is still useful and in a moment we are going to see okay it has thrown an error says that same directory specified as source and destination directory obviously this is not allowed actually it's a good thing that they don't allow so i'm just going to up change it as process it so that you don't overwrite your original images and just let click pre-process okay the models are only downloaded one time uh, and all images are pre-processed so let's check out the pre-processed images okay you see same images with descriptions let's look at the description so the description is one boy black hair facial hair gray pants jacket long sleeves male focus pants realistic solo stubble track it jacket and track it track pants so it's a pretty good description you can also manually modify them let's also modify our classification images so that uh, it will generate all of the description of classification images by the way this is useful as i said when you use file words if you are not using file words then these won't get used uh, this is also useful very useful if you use a hyper network or embeddings and i will also hopefully make a video about embeddings hyper networks are not very good but embeddings are really really good okay uh, let's pre-process our uh classification folder so the pre-process is in train top this is future of automatic 11 11 okay and pre-process pre it it is also pretty fast so this will be ex extremely useful to caption and also if your images are not properly cropped uh, and you have tens of thousands of images as i said that will take huge time you can just use this uh, as a beginner you can also use this to make your job easier and see the results how it is performing let's say you pick it your hundreds of images of yourself and you don't want to spend time then you can pre-process images like this and uh, try try train try the training on them and see the results if you can get good results then why not spend much time more time on them but if you want to get perfect results then you need to uh, manually crop your images and uh, set your uh, set your uh, description so let's see the pre-process now every image has description let's look at them okay it for example it defined this man as a girl which is a very incorrect and also a 3d asian black shirt uh, okay this is a completely incorrect description as you can see it completely failed and now let's compare this with the large git uh, which i have shown okay i wonder what kind of uh, result we are going to get with large git so i'm just going to uh, drag and drop by the way as i said i have uh, suggested adding this model to the automatic 11 11 to get better results and the large git generated a portrait of man with birth mm, yes absolutely fantastically correct when compared to uh, this trashy uh, um, description as you can see okay as a final thing uh, i suggest you to look at the li, LI 5 training uh, so this is getting updated by the experienced persons and for example in file words uh, they say that they are giving an example of instance token alexa is bad because underlying uh, data for alexa is great and it would be hard to override it uh, this is also bad because this is getting split into like this ohwx great class token is also important uh, i already explained them but you can also check these uh, pages uh, i will put the links of these pages into the description now i will show you one another very cool thing you see this protegen x uh, 3.4 is a custom model that has been generated by using multiple models a lot of training and uh, you see if you train your face or subject into this model it won't produce good results because the underlying data uh, have been uh, significantly changed so what how can we 
inject our face into this model there is a way to do that and now i'm going to show you we go to the uh, checkpoint merger and in the primary model we are selecting our target model which is protegen uh, x3.4 secondary model will be the model that we train it we are using which will be this one ohwx uh, 1308 and there is tertiary model so the tertiary model will be version 1.5 this is the model this is the base model of our model and what we are going to do is we are going to extract our image from base model and we will apply our image into the our new target model let's give it a name um, ohwx protogen okay 3.4 and set the weight uh, 0 0.75 this is 75 percent you may ask how did you come up with this value i asked the community and according to the experience of the community 75 percent is a good point you can of course try multiple different points you can uh, try your uh, different checkpoints to see how you perform also click the add difference so this will extract our face information from our base model and it will inject our face information into our new target model without um, breaking the underlying context the information uh, we are going to generate ckpt at difference and just click run in the cmd window you will see the messages like this and checkpoint save it then refresh here and just go to uh, our new model which is ohwx protegen now we can produce images by using the protegen model and our face uh, same as usual okay everyone i have done a few tests and the results are just amazing so you see uh, these are some of the images that i have selected from the results and let me show you something so you see this is generated by uh, protogen uh, and this is my original real image and this is the generated image you see the quality it is just amazing and uh, what kind of test i did uh, for testing i have used uh, the xy plot i have entered different uh, x values as cfg and i have entered prompt sr as the weights so how did i make so you you see the ohwx man and then we are entering a weight here right to give an importance to it so i have entered a keyword here change weight and i have uh, used it as a change weight here uh, in the prompt sr so the uh, you uh the automatic 11 11 uh ui inter, uh, application changed the weight for me and tested different weights now i can see the properties of this generated particle uh, particular image to see what were the used values then based on that i can generate anything i want so the weight used was 1.4 and the cfg scale was eight so by using 1.4 and cfg scale 8 i can generate much uh, more quality images uh, so these two parameters will work with my uh, merged uh, model by the way i also have used something else you see there is a model hash and that hash the hash written here also display it here this 95 means that i have generated another checkpoint but this time i have used it 95 percent weight uh, this worked better for me so in the beginning you can start with uh, 75 percent and if you are not getting good images then you can increase it and make different uh, model merges and then uh, do test on them so this is the way how to test and find out the good working uh, parameters uh, for your model and then use those parameters to generate more stylized images as you want but uh, the results are just simply amazing you can't just get these results so easily on the default stable diffusion model so you can uh, inject your train it model train it face into any custom model out there and generate the uh, beautiful images as you want so let's also upscale this image 
to do that i am just going to uh, send it to extras and i will upscale it with uh, rs ground 4x plus and here the result it is just beautiful let's also apply uh, gfb again to get better uh, face quality okay now amazing as you can see amazing quality amazing image there is only only an artifact here as you can see uh, so if i would generate such images i could also get rid of this artifact i think i have covered pretty much everything uh, as i said in the beginning just join our discord channel uh, from our about page and also in the uh, uh, in here you will see the link uh, just click the official discord uh, please also share like subscribe and if you support us on our patreon i would be greatly appreciated currently we have three patrons i think i thank a lot to them for becoming patron of our supporting our job you can also join our channel and support us from here as you can see i would appreciate every bit of your support uh, hopefully see you in another video please leave comments and ask the questions uh, ask the topics that you want to see as a new um, tutorial thank you very much hopefully see you later